that was developed by Vasily Leontief. He did not create it. It was created by Francois Quesnay, who was a French economist and mathematician back in the 17th century. But Vasily Leontief was the one who actually used it uh, more analytically and extensively. And he used that to calculate the, the US economy. So the input output model is used to analyze the interdependence between economic sectors or industries. So we know that usually an economy is divided into three sectors. So we have the agricultural, the, manufact the manufacturing, and the service sector. And we want to see how the industries of each sector depend on one another. And the purpose behind that is to understand the shock, the negative and positive shocks that occurs when they intermingle with one another. So we understand that the core rational of the input output analysis is the interdependence, the fact that you have at least two sectors that, that intertwine, that depends on one another. But of course, it is not just used at the macroeconomic level, it is also used at the micro level. So of course, companies use that to allocate their resources. Let's say a big corporation has many, many departments. So let's say they have like a thousand employees. So we assume that if you have a thousand employees, you have a ton of departments in your company. So such corporation will use that to see how they're going to allocate the resources within the company. So they assume that uh, one department resource de depends on another department's resource. But what is very interesting about the input-output model is that the fundamental assumption to create such a model is that the resources, or should I say the interdependence of the resources within each sector or each industry or each department must be linear. So that's why we use linear algebra. We assume that it is linear. So now that you know a little bit about the input output, uh, the, the historical background, I'm going, I'm going now to walk you through an example on how we use the input output model. So this example is, uh, is just a hypothesis, it's not real. So it's just for you guys to understand the process, that's all, nothing else. So let's say that the energy sector of an economy is made of two industries. So you have the petroleum industry and the biofuel industry. And these two industries are interdependent, which means that they depend on one another. And the demand for petroleum is estimated at $5 billion, and the demand for biofuel is estimated at $8 billion. So to meet the $5 billion, the petroleum industry needs 40% of its own raw materials and 60% of the biofuels raw materials. And to meet the $8 billion of demand, the biofuel industry needs 25% needs of its own raw materials and 75% of, of the petroleum's raw material. Calculate the cost of production for each industry. So let me walk you guys through this. So the calculations are a little bit complicated. So that's why I made a note. So let's go. So first, we know that, let's say that X is the cost of production for petroleum. And then let's see Y is the cost of production for biofuel so we know that to have the cost of production of petroleum we the petroleum industry needs 40 percent of its own raw material so 0.4 x and 60% of biofuel, so 0.6Y plus 5, the 5 billion. And then to calculate the cost of biofuel, so the biofuel needs 25% uh, 
of its own raw material and 75 of uh, petroleum plus eight. Okay, so we have this system of equation here. So this system of equation is what we're going to write into a matrix form. So we know that we have here x, y equals, so I'm going to put here P for petroleum and B for biofuel, so you will understand. So 0 0.4 and 0, 0 0.6 and 0 0.25. Okay, that's, and then times x, y equals, here's the demand. All right, so that's the matrix form. That's the linear algebra form. So that's the input output form you're going to write here. And then we have to find out the general solution that will help us calculate the cost of production for each industry. Now we know this, what we're gonna do. So let me write you guys here the general solution. So the, so the general solution calculate that is x equals a x plus d. So the A here is the input output. So this is the A. You can write it here in blue so that you guys will see. This whole thing here is A. Okay, this is D, the demand, and then X, call that X. So you multiply A times X plus D. So we're going to move the AX on the other side of the equation equals D. We're going to factorize X for I equals D. So X equals equals D. So what you see here is the inverse matrix. So it's the inverse of A that we will calculate to find, and then we will multiply that by the demand in order to find the cost of production. So now that we have the general solution here, that's what we're going to apply. So now let me Okay, so for those who remember, who have taken linear algebra, we know that the formula for the inverse matrix is, you write it A equals one AD minus BC A minus B or oh, not it's D that's the formula to calculate the inverse matrix and remember our matrix was 0 4 0 6 0 75 and 0 0.25 that was our, our original a so our original a we can note it here so just to be sure so this is little a b c and d okay so that was our original a the a here so what we're going to do now we're going to simply compute the numbers that we have. So we know that 
inverse is we're gonna do one over a d so 0 0.4 times 0 0.25 minus 0 0.6 times 0 0.75 and then you replace here you do so d is 0 0.25 minus so minus b so 0 0.6 0 0.75 0.4 okay I simply apply the inverse I simply apply the inverse method the formula here I simply compute so what is it going to give us inverse of a this is going to give us so this is going to give us 1 over minus 0 0.35 and you keep writing the same here 0 0.6 0 0.75 and 0 0.4 so what is it going to give us here we're going to, we can write inverse of a equals minus 2.86 so the 286 in 5 is 2.86 uh, 85 7 but I simply round it up to 2.86 over okay times this okay all right so now we have this what we're gonna do we are simply going to multiply the 1 over minus 0 0.35 times each coefficient in A. So let me do that here. So we don't need the general solution here. Come back, so I continue here. So we're going to multiply each. I'm going to write the direct response. So a minus 1 is going to be minus 0 0.75 and minus 1 144 so this I, I'm going to round up the numbers too so to make it easier so I can say it's simply minus 0 0.72, 1 point, 1 1.72, 2.15, and minus 1.14. Okay, so now that we know what the inverse of A is, don't forget we have to apply inverse of a times d which is going to give us this that we're going to multiply now by demand so 5 and 8 we're going to multiply that by demand okay so now this is simply uh, the rules of linear algebra that we're going to apply. So what is it going to give us? Simply going to give us, so we do minus 0 0.72 times 5 and 2.15 times 5 plus, let me write it here so you will see. Actually, let me
Okay. So a minus one times d equals. I'm going to write here for you guys to see. Minus zero seventy two times five plus one seventy two times eight. And then you have 215 times 5 plus 1 uh, plus minus 114 times 8. Okay, and then this is simple algebra here we do. Simple algebra, what is it going to give us? It's going to give us minus 3.6 plus 13.76 and then 10.75 plus minus 9.12 okay and then this is even simpler now the calculations become even really easy so 1 times g equals here oh actually one times d equals oh yeah i can write it as a matrix form which is going to be 10.6 and 1.63 so what is it going to give us it's going to give us here that the total cost of production for x which is here petroleum is going to be 10.16 billion and the total cost for biofuel is going to be 1.63 billion and this is our final answer so that's how you apply basically matrix algebra to economic analysis and this was a very very simple example because usually you will never see that kind of example in matrix uh, algebra in economic analysis they will give you a uh, an example where it has many economic sectors or many industries and you have to apply this uh, method that i went through is because if i did for instance three sectors just to calculate the inverse would have taken forever. That's why I proceed by two so that I can simply apply the inverse matrix uh, directly. Because with the three sectors, you have to apply a three by three order. And it means that you have first to calculate the, you have to calculate first the minor of matrix, then you have to do the cofactor. And then based on the cofactor now, you have to calculate the, the determinant. You have to calculate the you have to calculate the, the the determinant and then once you calculate the determinant now and that's when you apply the inverse so it takes forever that's why i use a very simple example with only two industries so you will at least see how we use the linear algebra method by hand so i hope you find this video very insightful and let me know in the comment what you think and until then see you guys soon